Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is September 30th, 2021, and we're here again with Evaristo Roman for part three of his oral history. So, um, Evaristo, you want to go ahead and start off here? Yeah, okay. Um, one thing I want to um, clear up, you know, iron out or just make sure that uh, people understand. On my first part of the interview, I was sick, you know, um, sure. because I looked at the interview and I noticed that I, I didn't look so well because that was because, um, of course, I'm going, one doctor told me to stab some antibiotics while the other doctor uh, prescribed them, my main doctor, my primary. Yeah. And so when I found myself with fever and all that other stuff, I was just recuperating and um, I started taking the medications again, which got me to this point where I don't look the way I did before. Um, I want to iron that out because I don't want people to think that I was under anything. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm under no psychotropic meds. I'm on no drugs. I haven't been, I haven't taken a drug since 1999 or drank a substance, uh, you know, a drunk, I, I don't drink alcohol, I don't do any type of drugs at all. I don't even drink coffee, really. You know, with just caffeine, which is also addictive, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything addictive, I stay away from. And, it, and it's gonna come to a part of my life later on where I'm gonna um, um, point out that conditioning is something that my conditions are due to doctors' inadequacies or bad decisions. Absolutely. And, um, and then again, there are parts where they saved my life. Yeah. In fact, quite a few times. Um, um, you, you, want, you asked me a question about music. Yeah. Right? Uh, music has always, if you're, if you're a Puerto Rican, music is in your blood. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, uh, basically all types of music, but we basically like uh, salsa because I remember, like in third grade, we haven't we had an uncle, which I don't remember. <laughs> Better stop laughing at me. That's my phone. That's one of my. <laughs> you know, uh, we had an uncle that he used to dance. Yeah. And. Because I lived with my, I remember I told you I went to uh, uh, like many public schools, uh, probably six, yeah, probably yeah. five, I have to remember. Um, because my mother was working, I was a little difficult to take care of, and they didn't take care of me. I had to stay in the streets, you know, until she came home. So my mother tried to have, you know, parts of my family after my grandmother's death. Uh, it was hard to place me, um, but I did stay with my aunt for a couple of years and my cousins. Yeah. Where they were with me, made eight. Wow. And then the uh, the family, the Gonzalez family, which my sister married into, my younger sister later on in life, uh, and he was a savage gold. Okay. 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 And. Uh, May 16th. Oh, wow, yeah. So, um, my uncle, he used to dance real good, and I used to watch him dance. Yeah, yeah. And I used to follow him. <laughs> I used to try to practice all his steps, and it's something that came naturally to me. Sure. So, I, when I was very young, and I would be in parties, and I would start dancing, they would throw quarters. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can continue dancing. I wanted to stop. I didn't want to. I was a little, I didn't know I shouldn't. Yeah. Cause that also reminds me of a, of a, of a, 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 a Google, Robbie, uh, which he's involved in the bowling, um, uh, Bronx bowling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thing now, but um, to stick to one side first. Just to show you, I was a little shy, even though I became the way I became. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I was shy of dancing. Yeah. And so they would 
to make sure they want to see me dance more, they would throw quarters at me. I would dance because I wanted those quarters, man. Did you make a lot of money? Uh, yeah, I sure did. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, quarter. Oh, that uh, went a lot further than it Oh, goes my now. God. Yeah. I remember we lived at that time, White Castle in Soundview, because those were the Bronxdale projects. Okay, okay, yeah. And um, at that time, that was like basically a banded area. You know, yeah. it was all. All you could see is cat. Well, imagine you could see straight through Castle Hill Project. Wow, wow! So all those projects in between, yeah, weren't there. Wow! You know, and I remember they were saying they're making Corvettes. They're making Corvettes. Yeah. Which is now I don't know um, another story. They sold it a few times, right? And I thought they were making cars. Yeah, yeah. So I went over there, went, let's go, let's go. We went over there, I'm expecting to see cars. And what it was is a department store. Oh. Because <laughs> I got a little dip disappointed there. Yeah. So I moved on, but um, it, there was where I first joined the gang, called the Seven Hoods. Okay. Right? Because whenever we went to, uh, to school at Elder Avenue, yeah. Uh, uh, San Lawrence. San Lawrence. San Lawrence. Yeah, I think we're right there by San Lawrence. And because if I I have problems sometimes talking because of the accolation, it starts kicking up on me and sure. I have problems. And that's what I'm feeling now. Mm -hmm. Um. So. If the white guys were catchers, yeah, they would beat the shit up. Mm, mostly Italians in that neighborhood. Uh, I couldn't tell you what they were, yeah, yeah. but they were white. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they were beaters, so they started busting us. Yeah. To Forty Seven, right, yeah. which is on Westchester Avenue, and now it's St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, because it's between uh, Parkchester and Sound Beach, sure. right? Um, so, you know, it's TS-47. Right? So at night, we will get together, first section, second section, third section, even though we fought against each other. Yeah. But this is something we had in common. Yeah. So we would get together, and we would go out looking for the white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whoever, every white guy we find out, we will beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Because that's what they did to us. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And there, they had the Dead End Boys. Oh, okay, the Dead End Boys, okay. Okay? Yeah, because there was a Dead End Street ah. off of Rosedale Avenue. Okay. And between Beach and Rosedale, right? Um, and, and, and so they called themselves the Dead End Boys. So we decided to make the Seven Hoods. Okay, yeah. Um, and the first time to initiate, we had to make sure to run. And inside the projects, there is a big circle where we basically played and everything. Even though it's supposed to be keep off the grass, yeah, nobody yeah. listened to of that. Of course, yeah. Right? Because uh, that's where we played. Sure. And one of the initiations was to run around the circle to see, make sure you can get away from the cop. Yeah. Now, mind you, I'm only like maybe, what, eight or nine? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Uh, but I ran that thing 17 times. Wow. When I went to bed and I woke up, I felt I had no legs. <laughs> I felt with my, under my knees, Yeah. they were gone. <laughs> my God, that was the first experience there. But, um, you know, we had, we play sports. Yeah. We, we were good at every sport. And I, I looked at 1040 Sound View which is a lollipop circle, okay. right? Yeah. So cars will come in and just do the lollipop. Yeah. Right? And that's basically where we played at a lot, besides yeah. the vessel. I remember one time, um, my, somebody, this guy was bothering my, co my cousin, Alma, right? Yeah. And well, she, she, she's the smart one. She came out like my aunt, Titi Rosa. Mm -hmm. And I fought the guy. Yeah. I, I, I fought the guy. I, I started defending my cousin. So my other cousin, Patsy, runs in to tell my aunt 
that I'm fighting. So my aunt comes outside and says, what's going on? By that time, I have taken care of the dude. He ran away, right? And my, cousin, my aunt tells me, I thought I was in trouble. My aunt tells me, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take care of your cousin. Yeah. You know? And don't allow nobody to mess with us. Yeah. You know? I'm sure that surprised you. You were probably... Yeah, I was thinking I was a little whipping. That was not the only thing because I remember they had... We used to help taking the... the because remember I told you I'm not a thief except for that. This one time that we were young. Yeah. And we used to take... Uh, now it's finest, but it was, uh, I think, something first. Uh, uh, it was on uh, Westchester and Rosedale. Mm. Right? Um, and there's a supermarket, and we used to take the, the, to make a little money, we used to take the cars, uh, the, the groceries to the cars, to oh, put sure, them in the sure. yeah. make little chump chain, nickel, dime. But one day we decided to take candy. Yeah. We would go in there, and we would stuff up, and just walk out. And then we would hide them. And then me, my, 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 my Walter, may he rest in peace, Ralph and myself. Yeah. I was the youngest one, and we kept going. So I said, let's go one more time, right? And we went, and we came out. Now, we started dividing the candy. <laughs> so guess who walks up? My Uncle Ray, oh, may no. he rest in peace. <laughs> I, got, I brought his picture, you know? Yeah. Because he's, he's uh, buried in Woodlawn. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. one, Besides Santos, he's one of my favorite uncles. No matter where he saw me playing paddleboard on the beach, yeah, he stopped to talk to me. Wow. You know? And um, I always felt good about that. And when he died, I, I said that. Yeah. In, 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 the, in, the, in the viewing and the funeral that they allow you to speak, I said that in front of my father. Because there's something about my father, you know, that I have I had issues with. You know, sure. because even though my father knew where I was at for 49 years, he never even wished me a happy birthday. I remember he said that. Man. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that hurt. And not only that, a lot of other things hurt. And I hate to speak about the, um, about it because he passed away. He was killed mm -hmm. uh, some years back um, in Puerto Rico after he hit the lot of and he was on his way home. But in Puerto Rico, the way they do, they trap you with the cars. You know, one hits you, the other one traps you, yeah. and then they get you. But I guess they hit him too hard. He flew out the window, and the money flew with him. And, Man. you know, he had his seatbelt, so they had to hit him pretty hard. But anyway, what happened was that um, I started, I, that was my that, the beginning of my dancing. Right? Yeah. Also, it was the beginning, because I remember going to that school, and again, that's why I started getting a lot of medals. Oh, okay. Because that's when the Presidential Medal came around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember this guy in Orchard Beach, maybe about, what, eight years ago, something like that. He came and he said, they were introducing you, because they, you know, uh, the, the Paddleball family is a real united family. You know, um, so they introduced people as they knew. Sure. So they were introduced him to me. He said, oh, I know him. I'm looking at him. Where you know me from? <laughs> you know? He said, I will never forget you. I said, what? He said, I thought we were doing the squat, the squat thrust. Yeah. Right? That was a, a, a certain uh, uh, um, uh, um, event. And he thought he had it won. And I came and last, and I just took it from him. Oh, man. <laughs> I did like 2,000 something or 3,000 squat thrusts. Wow. You know? Yeah. So I guess I was always in shape. So that's, and, and, but I was always humiliated because they used to have assembly, you know? Yeah. On Fridays. And everybody would have to wear blue and a red tie and a white shirt. And I used to have all my pants were very wrinkled. Mm -hmm. My shirt very wrinkled. 
you know, and I had to swallow my pride. Sure. And I didn't have pride, but whatever it was, I had to swallow it yeah. because it hurt. It hurt. You know, everybody was nice and neat and everything, and I was all wrinkled up, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I guess that's how I lashed out at fought. Sure. You know? Even though I was the smallest one, I would fight. Yeah. You know? Because I didn't take shit from my uncle, my cousins. I remember one time my cousin Ralph bothered me, and he's still alive, he could witness this. Um, and we were throwing carpets, right? So. And my mother was listening that day. I guess she was paying for them to take care of me, you know, yeah. for my aunt to take care of me. But still, it was hard because we only had two slices of bread. That's all we had. Yeah. We listened whenever she said, you know. The only one that was daring was my cousin Walter. He, he was always getting hit. <laughs> you know, everybody had a job function sure. in the house. Um, mine was the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, always yeah. the bathroom, you know. Um, and that's when I said that a lot of times, you know, um, I would get molested because we were all experiment, I guess. Sure. You know, because we were kids, we would experiment. And I remember I had my, uh, this is going to be hard, but it's going to, it's the truth, and I have to say it. Yeah. You know, because I'm not a hypocrite, I keep saying that, you know. Um, so. You know, with me, I was satisfied with rubbing and shit like that because I was only eight, nine years old, you know? Yeah. My cousin Alma, she actually showed me. He, she said, Barim, 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 because that's my house name, Barim. Yeah. Right? So she said, here. Yeah. And she put that, she took me and guided me into her, and she said, that's where it goes. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. found something new. Yeah. And I enjoyed it, you know? But... In my life, female, as far as sexually wise, females have always taught me sure. how, about sex more. You know, because like in, even though I, when I went to Puerto Rico at uh, six or seven, right, also the translated, right? Yeah. My cousins were very religious. My aunt, I mean, my grandmother was religious on, on my mother's side, and my aunt was very religious and all that. And... And we used to have the mosquiteros just to keep the mosquitoes out. Sure, sure. And I remember we had Margie there, and I would sleep with one or the other. But I would sleep, and then my older cousin, um, Luisa, he would come and start playing with me. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. See, so I think that I didn't understand this until later on in life. That that was that's what made me more, I guess, stuck in the work for many years. Gave me that nature, you know? Yeah. Where, you know, I treated little females like that. I tried to, try to, you know, always in school, try yeah. to do my little thing with them, you know? And then I kept the dancing part. Yeah. I kept getting better at it. So then finally they gave me back to my mother. Right? And there, that was now I'm going to, um, from there, my mother had me for a little while, and she uh, she allowed my aunt Teresa. I'm like a fourth grade now. Yeah. Uh, she had, uh, so, so somewhere in Queens, I know they had a bunch of Jews and walking around with the little things like that. I don't know if it was Queens or Brooklyn. I have no idea. Sure, sure. But uh, uh, I think it was PS50, and I already had all that all that little little. Bad things with me already. Yeah. And I would take my, my cousin Edgar, may he rest in peace, and he would stay across the street, and I would take the apples from the side and throw it <laughs> to him. <laughs> boom. And he would start putting them in the bag. And boom. Put them in yeah. the bag. You know, until they caught us one day. But my Aunt Teresa really loved me. She's from my mother's husband's side. Mm. Right, my first mother, because remember, my mother married into a, uh, a white man. Yeah. Right? Um, the Lucas, right? And then she had Lillian, my first sister. Then she had Sammy, mm -hmm. other brother. Sure. 
that they grew up in Palisades, New York, New Jersey. But he would come down to see us a lot, and he would take me out a lot. Yeah. And I would make money because I, I, the, he would tell me, look, I want to give you this, don't tell him where I live. I said, okay. Then the girls would tell me, here, I'll give you this, buy me candy and all that stuff, you can tell me where he lives. Yeah. Um, I played both sides. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a guy that actually, one of, uh, 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 that his name was Richie, he would come visit the house, he molested me. Oh, wow. He never pretend, penetrated in me, but he molested me. Yeah. You know, I remember he would put his thing between my legs and just rub. And uh, I didn't know, but I was a kid, five-year-old yeah. kid. You know, For sure. But um, with, with my Aunt Teresa, uh, I went to school, and I was getting hundreds all the time. Yeah. You know? And, and my cousins were Nancy and Alma, also another Alma. Uh, they went to uh, public school. My, my Edgar died, I found out. He became rock, and you know, he was into rock. And all yeah. That stuff. Yeah. Um, she begged me to stay with her. Um, and I kept saying, no, I want to go home and buy my mother a house. Yeah. Even though I was only like five, I think. Yeah, like yeah. You know, um, so, I guess I came back to my mother again. Because I remember one time I jumped up to turn on the light, and I just barely made it, and I brought down the whole chandelier. <laughs> oh, wow. And, uh... And that, that was, that was the end. Or? Yeah, my yeah. aunt's house. And she still was arguing with him that she wanted to adopt me. Yeah. You know? Um, but in any event, you know, I came back. And I will also stay with my father when he had a girlfriend. We lived on 147th Street and 3rd Avenue. And I was also in first grade. That was in P.S. Right in PS 54, I think it was. Yes. Right in front of the pool on Fulton Avenue in Katrina Park. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But we lived on the hill on 3rd Avenue. Now they got a, 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 a Wendy's there, you uh. know? Uh, um, and there again, I, 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 you know, we had a little group of friends and we were there and, uh, and I remember turning back, and there was this girl named uh, Rose, Rosemary Rosaline. And she, I looked, and she said, she called Marin, Marin. And she looked back, I looked back, and she went like that and showed me all shit, you know? <laughs> I said, wow, man, I'm just a little kid here. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But I, that's where I learned how to swim, too. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, okay, Because yeah, I sure. used to, die, even though I was that young, I used to go on the high diving board and jump. I always used to jump towards the edge, so I can grab on just yeah. in case of anything, oh, but I would sure. do it. I would, first, I started with a little diamond board, and they would let me. I don't know how they did that. But they they <laughs> would let me, you know. And that was another part where I started uh, swimming. That's when I started learning how to swim. Yeah. Um, the dancing became when I went back into 124, where I want us. We're gonna do walk around. Um, that's where we started fighting again. Sure. Because the Bronx was so beautiful. I mean, you know, there was so much life. Yeah. Everybody had a block. Everybody was, we were snowball fights against across the street. When I showed you, yeah. we would fight against across the street with snowballs, you know. Sure. And we were everybody, but we were friendly, but we were blocks. Yeah. Everybody had a block. And that's where Benji and them ended up hanging out at, at the end, you know. Um... That first time that I told you that happened in Puerto Rico, I was also sent back. Because I remember one time, she didn't allow us to curse or anything. And one time in my sleep, in the living room, in my sleep, I just started cursing away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I started saying everything on the room. And they, they couldn't tell me nothing, I was asleep. Yeah. And they knew it. I guess I was used to holding all that back. <laughs> But they also taught me a lesson, too, because I remember they used to go to La Plaza, you know, that's mm -hmm. where the main shopping area was at. Sure. And that was actually Oviedo, you know? 
eh, calle, Domingo, calle Domingo Cruz, Jamón Antonio, yeah. no, Jamón Antonio no es Diego, eh, Calle Domingo Cruz. And, and I, my mom asked me, do you want anything? I said, yeah, let me get some kenepas. Kenepas are the little green things that you suck on. Oh, sure, green, yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. Great. But then my grandma, my grandmother, they both asked me separately, and I said, yeah, bring me kenepas. So I asked them both to bring me kenepas, right? So I said, oh, you want to be slick, right? So they brought them. <laughs> And then they sat me down and said, you got to eat them all. Did you eat them all? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you know, um, one time in uh, in 47, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, when I lived on the Avenue with my mother, see, that's when I started going through the emotional changes because my mother used to go try to see me. Yeah. And my mother is pretty loud with her voice. And she would yell, and they didn't, my father didn't allow it. And she would be cursing from the street. Oh, sure, sure. You know, and everything that my father, and I will see, I, I know that as a child, I had to hide that in my subconscious. But I know that that hurt me, man. Yeah. Because that's my mother. Yeah. You know, and I always loved my mother, you know, no matter what. Another time when I lived in, with my, I, I, I went to another school I went to, it was on Freeman, right there, on an interview. Um, they had a school, I don't remember, they were like 50s, I think. <laughs> uh, but it was right there, and uh, oh, PS4. Oh, that's PS4. the one, no, uh, PS4, that's the one on, on, uh, on, on uh, Fulton, oh, in front of Katrina okay, Park. Okay, that's, okay, PS4. that's PS4. That has a pool inside also. So oh, it we, does? Yeah, okay, I didn't we, realize that. And we would swim on that, you know? So, um, my grandmother was raised, was raising me. She was the one who raised me. So I know my mother went to see me and my, I don't know, my aunt and all that for, but I know somebody threw her on the stage. Oh, wow. Oh. And that hurt me, man. Yeah. That hurt me because that's my mother, Absolutely. you know? Um. It doesn't matter where I went, I always try to go back to my mother. Yeah. You know, I guess I wanted that love. I always felt safe, even as an adult, when my mother was around. Yeah. Because when I was an addict and I had my problems and everything, she, my mother would find me no matter where I was at. Yeah. You know, um, if I had any detox I went to, she would find me. She would find me in Yankee. She would go to Staten Island University, and that's all the way back there. Yeah. You know, and she would, but she liked that one because she likes to be on the ferry. She has something because my father was always into the Marines and things. You know, he graduated from Marine Time School. I remember he said that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and Puerto Rico at the end, he was patrolling the island in on the boats. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my cousin, I remember my sister telling me she would go on cruises, and they would allow him to go in. They, everybody oh, wow. knew him. Oh, yeah, yeah, Everybody sure. knew him, you know? So, yeah. when I got back, that's where I was always safe for that. But the thing is, when my father and my mother broke up, I was very young. I was, so, here I am, alone, without a family unit. Yeah. My mother was always working. Her butt on. Like I told you before, we wasn't on welfare. Yeah, yeah. My mother provided for us. Yeah. You understand? And I guess that took away from the the loving. I but I did. I remember the times I, there was this there was this uh, uh, novela what we call in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Spanish people love novelas. Sure, sure. You know, and it was San Martin de Porres. He's a saint, a black saint, the first yeah, black saint. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And, and, and uh, in order for me to watch that, I had to permit my mother to allow her to watch it. She would scratch my back, because I loved my yeah. back to get scratched. You know? So, it's funny because sometimes I said, Mom, she would stop. And she, I guess she would go like that anyway, just let me feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? She played me all the time, but that's cool. You know what I mean? 
but that's okay, you know. <laughs> um, but I, 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 that's where, I, you know, I felt more comfortable right, with my mother all the time. Even though I, I, I suffered, like, it was cold, I had to be in the winter, I had to be in the steps like that, you know. Yeah. But lucky with the guys, we would play, you know, baseball in the hallways. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, punch ball in the hallways, anything. Like, we played games, stoop ball in the backyard. You know, you wouldn't see nobody in the front. You knew how to go to the backyard. Yeah. Because that's where everybody was at. Yeah. You know, uh, it got to a point they didn't allow me to play. At the end, they didn't, a lot of people didn't want me to play. I remember this guy, Robertito, he used to challenge me a lot, but he never fought me. So, you know, I whip his ass. <laughs> I was the smallest one, but I ran the block. Yeah. You know, um, when I went to Puerto Rico, my boy Pee Wee and Bobby, those are the ones where I used to go up the house, right? And that's where I would get hurt because I would see the hug and the love and the cooking and the smell yeah. and the watching of cartoons and the TV yeah. and her sister, her sister, which I couldn't have had a shot with her, but I later on in life, sure. but I respect her too much as, you know. Um, and, and um, you know, I, this, I wish I had this, I wish I had this, man. Why can't I have this? Yeah. Why can't I have this? You know? I remember my, this guy came to see my mother one time, and I, I was young, I know I was very young, and I'm watching TV, and they, oh, they're behind me on the couch and that, and they're trying, well, they lovey-dovey, whatever. But yeah. I heard them say, I have two girlfriends, and I want you to be my third. I oh, guess that wow. didn't go with my mother. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nah. And that's why I turned around, you know, because my, my mother, um, my mother, the, my mother, Never me married until she got hooked up with Miguel Angel. He was like a re he was used to practice wrestling and all that. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Yeah. And he treated my mother right. But you know, I guess my mother's a little hard. Mm. You know? Because yeah. I remember when my father was sitting my mother upstairs when we lived on the fifth floor first. Um, they were arguing, and my mother took a knife and cut his finger. Oh, yeah. And then I remember him trying to climb the step, the fire escape because she wouldn't let him in. Yeah. Or he thought it was somebody else. She yeah. was somebody else. This guy, my guy, I had, um, I think he hit her one time, my mother, and I had my friends open the door. Yeah. Because we, once you go down, that's when we lived on the first floor. You open, the, there's one door that you open when you come out of my house. This way you go down and there's some steps and then there's another door. Mm -hmm. So. We were like laying on him when they came out. My boy said he's coming out the second door. Yeah. Right? And I had a bunch of rocks. Yeah. And the minute they opened the door for me and they held that door open, I just started zeroing him on rocks. I hit him with so many rocks. Yeah. You know? And I guess my mother must have backed me up like usual. You know? Hopefully and, you never touched your mom again. I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think so. You know, um, but, you know, it, it's like, I, then I ran away. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. But she came looking for me. I remember they took a picture of me on the, uh, we had some friends. Oh, this girl was a fox, man. She lived on the Miguel, Miguel, uh, Carmen, her name was Carmen. Her mother was short and she had a fine body too, but she had this guy that, and they never see that new photography and everything. And they took a picture of me with a hat like this and holding a cigarette. Yeah. Right? It was cool. Uh, and Miguelito was the guy. Somehow, years later, um, I think a lot of people envy my mother, you know? Um, I remember years, right? After years, I was using. I was using, right? Years later. 
And there was this pillow I fell in love with. Right? And no matter who in my sister's had it, I was going and slip it under them and take it. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> and uh, according to what my sister told me one day, that my mother was sweeping, 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 and she went. Because now this lady went away, the uh, her friend. And they, she, they gave my, she gave a lot of things to my mother. One of the things she gave to my mother was that pillow. Mm. And my, my, sister, my mother said she's sweeping, sweeping, and t she went right to the pillow. And my, she said, open that pillow. And my sister said, uh-uh, that's his favorite pillow. I'm not opening that, I'm not messing with that pillow. She felt something. And when she opened the pillow, there was the wing of a bird oh. on a pink ribbon, a purple ribbon on a on a stick. Oh wow! You know? Yeah. Cause she thought it was a pair of works that yeah. I was hanging there. Cause my mother was smart. You know, I was, when I was going to the bathroom to use drugs. Yeah. Right. I didn't realize this until she re she made me realize this. Right? Yeah. I would come out with a heart on. Ah. Uh. Because the heroin back then, I was cut with coin, I wouldn't do that. Sure, sure. You know? Um, and this is after, like, this is like, you know, 15, 16. Yeah. Because I remember I started all this in public school. I started getting high in public school. Yeah. Um, and selling joints. Sure. And, 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 and uh, all of us did. And we were learning how to dance, too. We would dance. Of course, yeah. You know? Um, and we would practice on each other. The guys, I know how to do a girl step. Yeah. All my friends knew how to do a girl step. Yeah. Sometimes we say, okay, you play the girl now, and we're gonna practice a step. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the way we did. Um, but that comes later on. But um, that was about the time that my mother sent me to Puerto Rico. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I used to. Bye, I used to hang out with some people, even though I was that young, 11 and 12. And um, cause I already had, at that time, everybody was sniffed glue, yeah. right? And I really didn't like it that much, but I did, because everybody else did it. The older guys did it on the roof and all that, and I guess I tried everything. So I did it, but I really didn't like that, you know, in junior high school. I remember when I came back from Puerto Rico one time, um, they put me on, on, on A16. Because you gotta remember, when I went to Puerto Rico, and my mother sent me, like, I don't remember, it was 67, 1967. Yeah. Right? I had to be 67 or 68, because I came back in 70. Right? Yeah. You and, and I stood there like two years and a half, I believe. And it was because my mother found a bunch of smoke. On top of my, because uh, I used to buy, I was already, this is where I get, I'm getting a little confused at because I used to go dancing and sell joints at a young age, right? Yeah. And that was usually in fifth or sixth grade. Because when I got to Puerto Rico, I knew how to make works. Yeah. The first time I got high, it, it was with my friend Oscar's brother, Eddie. Yeah. Right? Um, because uh, he needed some change. I said, look, I'll, I'll go with you. Went to, there's a school in San John called 52, a, a schoolyard. And we went to the back, and we brought, and he skin popped me. Mm. And, and, and I said, I, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel nothing. You know, before you know, I'm, yeah. we both like that. You know, we, we went to the, by the time we went to a candy store to buy some poor more. Yeah. Because that's why he used to smoke. And I smoked with him because I started smoking too. Yeah. Um, we both fell out. So I, I started, you know. Yeah. And, and that's crazy, man. You know. Um, I have, with that time, that's because I, I get my time, my time line straight. Sure. Um, because um, my mother sent me to Puerto Rico 
in the beginning of the sixth grade. Yeah. I ended up in Puerto Rico in the seventh grade. Uh, at sixth grade and seventh grade, I learned how to read and write Spanish in one year. Okay, wow, yeah. Right, I was in Catholic school. And I'm sure my mother was playing for that. Yeah, I remember you said that. Um, you know, and I already knew how to hook up the words and everything. And the guys over there didn't know it. When I went dancing salsa over there, they didn't they have salsa. Yeah, there. yeah, it was. I mean, it was, a bit it was here. In the Bronx, really, in the, so. right, you know. Yeah. Because it was a, it was a, it was a, it was the new the salsa revolution. Because they were step, they were starting how to dance with two step, calling the mambo two step backwards, right? Like now they're doing the same thing. Yeah. But yeah. back then it was like that, and they didn't have that many turns. They would just go like that. Sure. However. We started adding, we started with our left foot forward and ending with our, le uh, our right foot back. Uh, and then adding turn. Yeah. And I was in a club called the Hunts Point Palace. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that, on a Sunday, on a Sunday, it would be more than maybe 2,000 people there to 3,000 people. With the best musicians. With the best, there. with the best. There were 10 bands for 250 wow. wow. You know, and they'll be from Friday to Sunday. Yeah. Sometimes. But usually the dance was on Sunday, you know, Sunday afternoon. That was a place to be. We also had a, a, a club called the, the 310 and a half. Okay, yeah, 310 and a half. All right. Um, when I went to Puerto Rico already, I had met this girl named Carmen. I always had older girls than me. Yeah. I had one named Rosemary. She was a lot older than me. That people would see me in the beach with her and they would say, what the hell? <laughs> she was like, man, I think she was like 23. Yeah. You know? And uh, I had to be 12, you know? I had to be 12. That's when I went to Puerto Rico when I was 12. Also, with Carmen, she got pregnant. I remember you said that, yeah. But she didn't tell me that. You were already in Puerto Rico before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, when I came back, I couldn't interrupt that. Yeah. You know, I couldn't do that. You know, um, that's when I bounced from school to school. But basically, I settled in, in 124. Back again. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Oh. All right, bye. So we were at um, the 12, right? Yeah. Okay. So we had a club. We had a, a, a youth program on Prospect Avenue called the Bayamon Social Club. Oh, okay. I've, I've heard of that before, yeah. And, um, you know, it's like uh, um, it, we will get paid for just going on trips and playing games and everything. I get forty nine dollars, I think. It was. Wow! You know, and um, we went on a trip to uh, uh, somewhere up there, I'll see. And it was an indoor pool, and this guy that was real husky, he jumped in. And he started like splashing the water. I thought he was playing around. Yeah. But after a little while, I see he wasn't playing oh, around. Oh, he was drowning. Huh? Yeah. Oh my God. So I jumped over him. Yeah. Right? Because remember, I always have that athletic ability. Yeah. Right? Um, and I kept pushing him towards the edge. Yeah. Pushing him towards the edge. Right? And then, by then, somebody came and grabbed him. Yeah. So that's where I saved my first life. Wow, that's amazing. You know? Um, you were how old then? I couldn't tell you. I was like, uh, I think it was fifth or sixth grade. Wow, that's, fifth that's grade. crazy. Fifth grade. Yeah. Summer fifth grade. You know? Um,
day. I was just thinking about something because I left a lot of things out from Puerto Rico. When I got to Puerto Rico, yeah, right. I was all, I, I, you know, every, every, in here in in, in the states, every time, even in uh, forty seven, right, and um, I used to go up. And the end of the year where they give awards and everything. I yeah. always went up for sports. Yeah. Always for sports. Always for sports. Um, and 124, always for sports. Yeah. My first one was uh, ping pong. I probably wasn't in, in the beginning of the fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. And I was, I was hitting the ball. I was hooking the ball. Wow. Because the table was like, like, like this. Like if I was like, like this, that's all you see in my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I was hooking the ball. <laughs> I didn't even know I was in a tournament. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I remember you. I, I yeah, too. I didn't yeah. know I was in a tournament. Yeah. And and back then, when the when the and the gym teacher whistled that that whistle came, everybody got on one knee. Yeah. No matter what they were doing, where they were at. And then uh, they said. Um, here I got here I, I think I think that a small a small gym teacher, I don't remember. Um, he said I wanna make an announcement this one of our guys got an award. Now his name is Evarito Roman. <laughs> Will you please come and get this award? Yeah. And that was a nice award for winning the district. All the all the schools in that Bronx area. Yeah, yeah. From 124. I want to walk around there. Because I want to do the walk around. I want to show you where we used to fight at lunchtime. Absolutely, yeah. And it was Tall Man's birthday yesterday. Mm. I sent him a I sent him a birthday card. And uh and, and um. He asked a question on Facebook. You know. That's how I found Charlie. Yeah, you know, through Facebook, know. huh? No, through through Tolman. Oh, through Tolman. Oh, because okay, he put okay. he put fifty one. That school. Yeah. At the picture, he says, "Who knows what the, what the name of the, the name of the school?" Yeah. And I said, "That PS fifty one." Yeah. I said, and we used to fight every day with them because I went to 124 and we used to, there was a, a church and in between the church there was a lot. Yeah. And in that lot, we used to rumble every, at I, lunchtime, I every that, day, yeah, yeah. every day. That's why I want to do the walk around with you to show you Oh, that. Absolutely, absolutely. And Charlie used to be from that, in that area, that neighborhood. You know? Uh, uh, so he said, oh, shit. And he put something like real gangster. Like uh, he put me on the face of Al, Al Pacino. <laughs> you know, I, I lost that because I don't. I didn't know much about Facebook. Yeah. I got myself in trouble on Facebook in the beginning, sure, because I didn't know nothing, and I thought I was talking intimate with females, and I, with the trust came there, and then they sent me pictures, and only one time did I react to that, but after that, uh, they started sending me a lot of pictures. And then they started shake, try to shake you down. Yeah. You know, oh, could you send me this? Could you send me that? And remember, I have a benevolent heart. But I, I, one thing is that every time I talk, we went in bed, and and and, and and Naomi's right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Naomi's right there. She is. So one one needed money, and. Naomi, Naomi, you want to help her out because she gave me a story and I felt for it because these yeah. are supposed to be decent looking girls. Yeah. You know? Uh, so far, that's the way they acted. But I found out that that's what they do. They try to shake older guys. You know? Yeah. Shit, send them nice pictures and then ask for money. You I mean, know? It, it, it might and, just be some, you know, guy and. No, no, it it was it was them. It was oh, them okay, because okay. they have friends and friends yeah, and yeah, friends, yeah, you know. Yeah. And um they they you know, and then when I didn't react to that, now all of a sudden you know, I, I'm a pervert. Yeah. You know? Um I got hacked. We found 
likes six fake profiles wow. or seven fake profiles of me. Yeah. Right? Facebook sent me a couple. They were posting things, real nasty things. I found one that they post Chris Brown videotape of having sex. Oh, wow. In my group, too. And uh, I didn't know much, so I didn't know how to uh, look for uh, the people that had us blocked. That was they allowed to do that. Yeah. Because now when my group is going on 80,000, so I just stuck because the truth, you know, comes out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was only guilty on the first time because I was, um, uh, this girl, Cookie, was one of my administrators. And she was in the pool, right? And she sent me a couple of pictures. And I said, you know, I, you know, it'd be nice to see one, uh, see one of you in a bathing suit. And somehow she took that the wrong way. Because I like to see females in bathing suits. I mean, I like, I remember I was a lifeguard. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and uh, I don't know, I just, I admire the opposite sex. Yeah. Always did, since a young kid. Um, but anyway, that ro that steam rolled into something else or something else because females take your words and they twist it, and, and, and you know because the way I am, and uh, I treat I treat females like in a nice way, you know, and I'm always like maybe a little. They take it for flirting, but I always tell them nice things. Mm -hmm. Because I know females on Facebook are lonely. I know a lot of them are, have voids in them, you know. And so, I, and if you look, I'm, it's not with one to specifically. I call everyone my dearest. Yeah. I friend. I, I, I always give compliments. I always do that because that's the way I learn to be. Yeah. You know? Uh... The ones I like is a different story, but that, but I, I, uh, I didn't know much about Facebook, and then so they started um, having conversations back and forth like if it was me, you know, and, and I only got to find that out because of the hacking, the the the, the hacking when the Facebook sent me this, I didn't do yeah. that, yeah, and even not even not so long. Instagram, you know, we we try to open up a uh, uh, Amazon account or something, and they had my name on it with a different picture. Oh, a few wow. people, a few people told me, "Is this you?" Yeah. You know, yeah. I said, "No, that's not me." You are asking me questions, and I know. And then other people I had too because they asked me. Yeah. You know about it, and I always I, I don't fall for that. You know, I know she's my friend. I'm not going to... And she never really... This girl never really talks to me. Why am I going to talk? Yeah. See, I learned a lot from uh, like seven years ago when I first got into Facebook. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So that doesn't happen with me anymore. Yeah. You know? Um, in any event, getting back... But that, I guess that that goes back to my childhood. Yeah. You know? Um, and because I was... After... I guess being molested, you could call being molested because I, I was younger than them. I enjoyed it, I'll tell you the truth, I enjoyed it. Sure. But, uh, um, my therapist told me that was abuse. Yeah. That was abuse. Yeah. You know? Um, because I was younger than them, all of them. Um, Getting back to where you want, what part you want to get back to? Because I tend to go all around. Oh, no, place. okay. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to uh, say about music growing up? Okay, um, oh, well, well, the music, when the Sunset Revolution started, like I said, we danced, man. We, we, we went to every club, and we wasn't available to go in. Yeah. And in the Hunts Point Palace, right? Oh. I started also in the school place. I came, I was the lead dancer. Ah. Right? Yeah. When we did our junior high school yeah. uh, um, play, right? Because they, remember I told you they put me in age 16? Yeah. Right? I kept getting in trouble and they didn't understand. I was getting hundreds. Yeah. 
But I was get I was throwing chairs out the window. Yeah. Fighting, doing a lot of things. And they said, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" So then they kind of realized when they looked back at my other schools, I was always in either two or three. You yeah. know, yeah. you know, uh, uh, two, three, you know, uh, three, three or three, two or things like that. You remember sure. back then it was like one, two, three to six. Then they had CRMD, uh, which was for the people that were little, you know. Sure. Um, and and then they found out, so they brought me down to six one. That's when things started change. Yeah. To change, you know. And I was already dancing there, and I was also hanging out in Cornwall there, where that's really um, a couple, uh, many of, of the band members, of the band members from Willie Colon band came from there. Ah, I 156 see. in Cornwall, Dino, Alfred, Robin, uh, Freddie, all these guys were musicians. Yeah. You know? um, my sister went to Dodge, and that's where Willie Colon, uh, uh, that's where uh, Willie Colon, Sure. Um, but we always then. Um, Would you go to um, hooky parties? Ever? All the time. All the time. All yeah. the time. When I came back, that's what that was. Not 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 in public school. Yeah. But we did. What we did in public school was this. In public school, after school. Yeah. Oh, let me also tell you about this. Um, the first time that I started to fight, and, and cause the, we were also fighting against the blacks. Yeah. You know, um, and this was in the beginning when I first was, I, I think it was in uh, um, um, first and second grade. Yeah. Because I missed the whole first grade. My mother didn't know it. Oh, I see. I yeah. need to hang out with this uh, black kid from Union Avenue. Yeah. Um. I would go up his house. Yeah. Every day at 3 o'clock, came out, would come to my house. <laughs> you know, you walk in my house, you became a friend. I forgot what his name is. But anyway, uh, uh, as years went by and I came back, you know, um, they got fresh with my sister. And I remember that I went to fight the guy. And when I look back, this guy named Baquero, that he was pretty tall. Yeah. You know, and a lot of other Spanish guys were behind, Puerto Ricans, because they were all Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Came, they were behind me, and they said, let's do this. So we would fight every day after school. Yeah. You know? And I, I hope I show you where <laughs> it is. Oh, shit, I jumped on that. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> My phone, but I like that. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. And, and the thing is, uh, and then they started to gain our respect. Yeah. You know, and, um, but that's when we started dancing. That's what I remember, because I already, from, uh, from, uh, my cousin, my aunt's house and that, and my yeah. uncle knew how to dance. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, well, I danced whatever he did. Yeah. The pachanga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he danced a lot of pachanga. I loved it. You know what I mean? And then, when we here, we started with the Sansa Revolution. We used to sneak into the Hunts Point Palace. We used to sneak into it, right? We used to find a way in, no matter what. Yeah. But I used to, what I used to do is get the band members to let me take that equipment oh, so up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you that's the ahead. first time I saw Larry Hollow. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. he played at the Hunts Point Palace, I asked one of the guys. So could I bring in his instruments up, you know? Yeah. He says, yeah. He knew what I was doing. So anyway, they will see us inside the club anyway. And there was a bouncer with Papa John, mm. right? A big fat guy, yeah, you yeah. know? He was at the door. So he finally started giving me flyers to give out. <laughs> put, you, put you to work. <laughs> yeah, he put us to work. And as I gave you the flyers out, we were on the front giving flyers out. Me and a couple of my friends, I don't remember who they were. But, you know, what I used to do is also, I would go, and there was a club called, remember I told you, The, the Way Out? Yeah. And The Time Tunnel? Because uh, we used to fight the first, uh, in 156, we had the Canadians. We were like stickball teams. Mm. Then. They had Bouncer from the 
from from the from uh, Trinity, Tiffany. Okay, from Tiffany. Right? Yeah. Or Trinity, Tiffany. So yeah, tri Trinity. Tiffany, Trinity. Okay, yeah. Right. And then and then uh, that's off Jackson, right? Yeah. And then um, then we had uh, uh, the, well, we were Canadians, right? We played stickball, and they had me always playing third or first because I was small. Sure. Right. And um, that was, I think, when I, when I came back from PR, right? Or was it before I came? Yeah, before. And I remember, yeah, before I went to Puerto Rico. Because that's when I already brought um, some, this guy named Santana. He went to the body. He said, I want to get the $2 bags they got over there. Mm. And I said, good. And the first time I brought five, I didn't know. Yeah. And and I didn't then when he brought it, he brought me back, I said, I don't know how to use this. Yeah. And this guy named Wilfred, may he rest in peace, I heard that. He showed me how to do it. And I was out for like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, yeah. And then I came back, and then a lot of my friends goofed me. Yeah. You know, Oscar, Pedro, my main little crew from a hundred, from a hundred fifty A Street. They say, oh, yeah. Hundred fifty A Street. Yeah. And, uh, right, because hundred fifty six years so, old. Yeah. So that's where I basically hung out a lot. Yeah. And um, we were all sneaking anyway at that time, right? Um, and we would let, and we would practice with them, but all the bands, the, the clubs we used to go to, yeah. right? Our main club, there was a club called on Westchester, the 310 and a half club. Sure. That was a dancers club. Okay, okay. Right? Uh, there was the rock room downstairs and the Latin room upstairs. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay? Yeah. And then we had one turntable after another turntable. Yeah. Right? Then this guy named Robert came, and he came with a mixer. Oh, wow. And that's when we started mixing the music one after another. Yeah. So Richie started doing it in and, and the, and the, and the Latin room upstairs. And the rock room was downstairs. So what happened was that um, we were like the in club, yeah. you know, uh, locally, you know, yeah. right? Because everybody that went there knew how to dance. Yeah. Knew how to dance. That's where I met the mother of my kids, Sonia, you know? Um, That was after the, that was after the Ghetto Brothers. That was after the Ghetto Brothers, yeah. Because um, um, this is where I first went to. Uh, I have to get it right because uh, if I went, if I went to Puerto Rico at the age of twelve, that I was already dancing, right? I yeah. went over there dancing. Yeah. You know. So it had to be like that because that's when Carmen was also not pregnant, you know, and I was young. But when I came back and I, and I remember we danced, uh, that club was there after I came back. Ah, uh, I see, I see. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and it was an in club um, cause. Um, I was like 18 when I was going to that club because that's when I met my the mother of my kid. I was 18, she was 17, you know? But I already had, had a kid yeah. from before, you know? And that was the club that we would go to. But then we had the Corso. Sure. We had the Ipanema. Mm -hmm. We had Casablanca. Uh, we had San George Hotel. We had Colgate Garden, right? Yeah. The Village Gate on Monday. Oh, sure. The Hippocampo on Kingsbridge. Yeah. Um, the Latin Dubonias on 138th Street. Um, the Tropicolo on Longwood. Yeah. Um, San George Hotel, of course, in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a few. Uh, the Cheetah. Mm. Right, um, and Bonnie Google's, Bobby mm. Bonnie Google's was right down the street from uh, the Corso, oh, right? Okay, okay. And 
And then they had Wednesdays across the street, but that was a freaky club. Oh, really? Okay. That was a freak, man. They would do all kinds of shit. I couldn't get in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was too young. You know, but um, in Bonnie Goose, they would draw faces, man. <laughs> when you when you go in, they had all kind of funny drawings, you know, yeah. with faces, guys with big heads and all that shit. But if you wanted your drawing, you would get it, you yeah. know? Um, Like I said, we started dancing forward, and um, that's where the Sasa Revolution happened, because all these bands started popping up. You sure. know, uh, you had Joe Batan. Absolutely. Which the last time I hung out with, because oh, he was also a gang member. You know, uh, we had we had uh, um, Eddie Palmetti. Oh, yeah. We had a Charlie Palmetti, which is right? good, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But it's just that Charlie Palmetti was more with the hops chord, with the organ. Yeah. He went more, but they call him a maestro de la blanca, he la negra, you know? Yeah. Um, um, also, uh, uh, we had, uh, it was Joe Cuba before that, with sure. Jimmy Sabater, Pete Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, he went with the Boogaloo Blues, with Johnny Colon. Um, the first time I seen Johnny, the Boogaloo Blues, play was on a uh, call, uh, the Embassy Room, and that was on 160th, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going next to uh, Merrill's, right there in the corner, and he played Boogaloo Blues. Oh. And that And that song was on, man. Yeah, that song yeah, was yeah. on. Because you had Willie Colon, Johnny Colon. Yeah. You know? And they were saxophone players too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, we, uh, um, the, the, the Hippocampo was on Wednesdays. The Tropicolos was on Wednesdays. Mm. Uh, the Village Gate was on Monday. And that's in the village. Yeah. And it went down, you went down, and they had a little boat in there. It was, it was nice. I, I don't know why. I guess they allowed me in because I didn't look, even though I was short, I didn't look nice. I always dressed. I always had my money because, like I said, I used to roll up 30 joints for one bag. Yeah. Right? on the, From the way out. Yeah. So I needed to buy two of them. Now, the dance maybe was a dollar. Yeah. Or 50 cents to get it. Right? Now, the drinks were a dollar. Pizza and a, for a quarter, you can get a pizza and a soda, right? So if I sold 50 joints and I sold 30 joints for one bag, I made money. Yeah. So I sold another bag because I'm going to tell you, there were so many people. The bathrooms were, and the husband palace were happening. That's where yeah, everybody went to yeah. do their shit. You yeah. know, I was too young into that to get into that coke scene because I never did. I never really liked coke. Yeah. You know, but the, what was happening there was heroin. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and I really didn't like to drink much, you know, uh, but I did uh, just to have my little drink and look, I just drink Tom Collins. Ah, Tom Collins, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and I just thought I was hot shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, even though I was just 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how they got, they served me, I don't know, it, it, it's crazy, but... When I got, those were the, those were the clubs, man. It was so good, man. So it, many it, clubs, yeah. So many nice clubs. I'm sure Brooklyn had a lot more. Yeah. But I, and the one I went to Brooklyn was in Henry Street, was in St. George. Sure. You know? And, and I had a great time, man. I had yeah. a great time, you know? Um, I'm trying to think of something because I had, the, this girl also go to Puerto Rico to see me. It was Rosemary, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I was like, what? Well, at that time, like 15, right? When I got back here, I was like 15. Because I was playing minor league baseball in Puerto Rico. Because yeah. when I got to Puerto Rico, I was so good in baseball. I ain't little league. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because, right, I remember the first time. I was across, because we lived right across the street from the Caserio. Mm. Caserios are like projects, you know? Sure. But they're only two stories in Puerto Rico. Ah, I see, I see, yeah. Okay? 
So I walked, my father worked in the Molinos, and when I got there, there was nobody there but me and him. And so during the day, I went, and I went, I looked for where I'm going to play my sport, you know, yeah. I like it. And I put on a jersey that said 124, and number six. But I had two medals here. Yeah. Because I left to, I left to Puerto Rico with a lot of medals and trophies, sure. man. You know what I mean? And like I said, every time I got up, on the stage was to get a medal, yeah. to get some type of sports recognition. Track and field, I got the bronze medal, even though I slipped and fell, yeah. I also wow. got the track, I also came in third. I would have probably came in first if I didn't slip and fall because they had pebbles back then yeah. in, in, in Pelham Bay. Yeah. They didn't have carpet. Had it been carpet, I would have dead it, you know? But there was this guy, Dennis, in public school, that he ran faster than anybody. <laughs> That guy, I don't know, he had twisted legs that ran like that. I don't oh, know wow. how the hell he even ran. But he ran. And this guy named Eli, yeah, he used to knock the shit out over the fence all the time. Wow. But the thing is that he remained his size all through life. Huh. You know, um, but he was a good-looking guy. Girls liked him. My sister liked him. My oldest, you yeah. know, the one that came in before, after me. Um, I had to take my... My um, um, birth certificate with me mm. to all the games. Oh, but they, I see. See, yeah. you can have two guys that are 12 years old that will be 13 before the years old. Yeah. You know? Um, then I was good. No matter what position I played, I was too good. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then uh, from then. I went, they put me on Pony League. Um, and I would play for Puerto Rico Cement. Yeah. Right? Uh, and that's where we play our game. Be, be, by uh, Savaras, yeah, we still, Amelia. Which Amelia really belongs to Guaynabo in Puerto Rico, but mm -hmm. everybody says Catania because we are on this side of the mountain. Ah, uh, I see, I see, yeah. And in between is the Army base. Yeah. Which I ended up. Uh, uh, working in because my father, I found a battery, I took it home. I really took it for him and I put it in the corner. Before you know it, I'm seeing a judge. Oh, that's right. I remember you said that. Yeah, your father didn't. I didn't even get, I, well, in fact, I didn't even get to see the judge. Yeah. I was on my way to um, Atore. It was a youth house. Yeah. And a, and a real bad one at that. Um, but people was escaping all the time. Yeah. I mean, it was so bad that people went to throw out the garbage and they just ran towards the fence. Wow. You know? Um, me, I didn't have nowhere to run. Yeah. I really didn't speak that much Spanish. Yeah. You know, what's that helped me uh, with the Spanish was Jovetito and, 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 and Robert because they spoke a little English. Yeah. But I went to play that basketball game, and they, and they called this guy named Chuleta. His mother called him, and they needed one more guy, so they asked me, you want to play? And I said, yeah. I went, I shook my hand, yeah. And I went out, I, I took a shirt of my shirt off. I had my jersey with sure. the medals in it. I said, wow. Yeah. And they said, you want to walk? So I started bouncing between my legs and, and layups. And yeah. they said, oh, shit, jump shot. And they said, wow. You know, but I, I got known because of my sports sure. in Puerto Rico. And I, the older guys were always picking me. Yeah. Even I was playing with my father. Uh, at, night, at night, we would play games against the guys, that, the, uh, the Italian guys that came from 116th Street. Uh, they were betting money. Okay, okay, yeah. I didn't know they were betting money. Yeah. But I was playing shortstop for them. Ah. You know? And I guess whatever money I made, my father took it. Yeah. Or someone gave me some on the side, you know? Uh, but then, um, cause when I went to Puerto Rico, uh, the first, one of the first things my father told Naomi was how good of a baseball player I was. Yeah, yeah. You know, cause from Puerto Rico cement, there was this girl, I like Nana, right? Mm. And she, Used to be really pretty tall. I used to hang out with her brother, Nan Nanan. Yeah. 
that's the last thing. And he, she would walk down real nice down the block. And I used to hide because the guys would would tell her that, oh, you all sound like she thinks she has. And me, I, I didn't want her to see me with them. You know, like yeah. saying that because I liked her. Yeah. Even though she was taller than me. And at the end, when I was covering third base one time playing, and I covered the base like that, and the guy slid him with the spike and, and, and got me on my knee. Oh, and I, wow. threw, I threw the gloves off. Her and her sisters were one of the first ones that got to me, you yeah, know? Yeah. And we became kind of real close when we, I started seeing her in the in the big dances and sure. Fiesta Patronale, where we go in Puerto Rico, that's where the town celebrates. Yeah. And I will hit because in Puerto Rico you can hit your ride. Yeah. Hit your ride anyway. Uh, because public, the public car stopped at 9 o'clock. Uh, so a lot of times I slept out because my father told me if you don't get hit by 8 o'clock, you, you sleep out. Wow. So my grandfather, he used to open the door around the back. Yeah. That so was yeah, yeah. My grandfather. He was my biggest fan anyway. I really miss him. I used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. Oh, yeah. But he, he used to say, you want to cut my, my shit? He yeah. used to come and grab, come bring it over here, I'm going to cut it. <laughs> he, used to, he used to walk around with cool bars. Uh, it's a knife like that. Oh, it's like curved, huh? Yeah, yeah. they're really for carpets, but they used to use them back then to yeah. cut. And I used to get, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I also had to sleep in the living room, and they had the hanging thing. I would live with my grandmother. Yeah. And a coat rack. Okay, yeah. And he put the coat on and the hat like that, and I thought it was a man. And that, that was so, <laughs> no matter how much I knew it was a coat rack, I was scared shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, of I course. I was scared <laughs> shit, man. I was scared shit. But, you know, I took acid in Puerto Rico for the first time because I worked in the army base. Like I tell you, mom, after I came out, they had me as a trustee because they seen that people escaped. Yeah. And I didn't escape. Yeah. And then nobody messed with me because um, this guy, Bambido, mm. he grabbed my butt. Oh, that's right. And you. And I grabbed him. And then. Beat him. To I grabbed beat him. Beat him up, right? And then. And one time, and he did it again, and did it again, I grabbed his. Yeah. And at one time, I, I just reacted. He went to grab mine, and I popped him. Yeah. But then, the guards used to hit you with a stick. Yeah. All, every guard had a different size stick. Yeah. I didn't want to get hit. And this guy named Mr. Torre, he was just screwing everybody, oh, oh, man. But I had the decent guys behind me. Yeah. You know? And he said, okay. I knew when I turned around, he was a, he grabbed me and I, I, I went on him. And he couldn't really fight. Yeah. But for, if he, we're here from New York, we know how to fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I just put him in one. I did a monkey flip. He hit the wall. And I squared him up and I hit him. I broke his head and I broke my arm. So mm -hmm. we went. Um, I'm moving around all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. So, um, uh... So I guess, I know you spoke a, a lot about your time in Puerto Rico in the first part, but if there's, if you'd like to say anything more about Puerto Rico, maybe you can do that now and then we'll go to, um, uh, maybe if you want to move to either the Ghetto Brothers or your time after the Ghetto Brothers after that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What, what happened with Puerto Rico is that he said, I, I started working in the Army base because yeah. Remember, I was in Catholic school, right? Yeah. And I told you I needed to beat the shit out of that kid yeah. before because he thought he was hot shit because his sisters were pretty. And and nobody bothered him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And no, they really were punching the ball on the hand like that. And I just went over and I <laughs> over the fence every time, you know. Because here we used to try to roof it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. With the Spaldines, we used to try to roof it. And... That was, that was nice. 
I, I, I met this guy. Like I, I think I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this guy. I met in Puerto Rico in Catholic school. I got a picture of Catholic school when I was in Catholic school. With yeah. Me. Yeah. Um, and I, I met him, and we were always getting in trouble together. Oh, okay, okay. And I was, was always going to the to the to the principal's office as none because I beat the shit out of him twice. <laughs> and then they called it smoking. Oh wow! Yeah. Another time we wanted to build a boat. Oh okay. And everybody was building a little tortonera and shit to make the the plantains. Oh you wow! Know? Yeah. And then another time was because the girls, we used to put little things in their home economic bread. Yeah. While they were sitting outside, we were yeah. sneaking in, in the oven, we would throw little rocks. So the <laughs> dog would blow over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and they got, so I was, and when she didn't catch me, she called me anyway. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> she said, I know you did something wrong. <laughs> Even if it's not this. <laughs> One time I got really hurt, though, because uh, yeah. they were giving out the rosary with the nice, behind the coming when I was born the other day. And I really won the eggs. Yeah. But I looked at it before she said, look, and just because of that, she didn't give it to me. Oh, and, I, wow. and I really went. And then uh, the sister the, then used to take, the sister Dean then used to take me out. Yeah. She was sister Nora. Sister Dean then was teaching me in Spanish mm. every day, two hours. Okay, yeah. Right? And she was really nice me and she got me one you know yeah well, that's good because that's i good. told her you know um but that that was it besides that i played then from there i played minor leagues i played for catania that's right that's right yeah for my time and I, they were watching and seeing the game i think it was one dollar two dollars this was stadiums now i'm playing sure, in stadiums sure. a lot of people thought my father was playing third base yeah I was playing shortstop. That, that because your brothers, right? So we were brothers. Yeah. yeah. Because I look like my father exactly. Yeah. It's just that my father is like five eleven. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. You understand? And um, that was it. I would have been professional, for sure. Sure. Had I stayed in Puerto Rico, but I didn't get along with my stepmother. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, uh, one time, like I said before. You know, uh, the first girl my father brought over to Puerto Rico, which was Annie, she was a real beautiful woman. She had two daughters. They were wanted to be just as beautiful as his mother. As their mother, they didn't want to clean, they didn't want to do nothing. Yeah. So they had, she had me doing everything. Until my aunt went there one day and broke on her because she was sending me to get this, get that, do this, do yeah. that. And my mother said, uh, my aunt said, I asked for the iron, and she said, no. And my aunt said, broke, she had enough. She said, well, you got two girls, he's a man. You got two daughters there and, and they're not doing anything. Yeah. You know, let them do it, why don't you call them? Yeah. And my aunt snapped at them, mm. you know? And I guess she couldn't handle the life in Puerto Rico because she was too pretty, you know? Yeah. And Puerto Rico, you know, it's nice. It's real, you have a lot. A lot of fun, man. Yeah. You know, but you have to want it. It's not the city, you know. Yeah. Uh, even though they had the condado and they have all nice, nice areas now, even more than ever. But anyway, I ended up there because she called my mother a hoe, and I said no. My father, my mother never drank, my mother never smoked. My father found you in a bar. Yeah, yeah. And she would chase me. Yeah, yeah. And she fell. Oh, wow, yeah. And, I, and my father used to hit me for any little reason. Never let me say my part of the story. Sure. You know, he would ask me after he hit me. I'd say, why, why ask me now? And the thing is that I didn't cry. He would hit me like a man. Yeah, I know. See, I, I had, that. I had yeah. oral surgery. Wow. Because when I came, I already had a loose jaw. Wow. But, you know, he would hit me like a man. I didn't cry. Yeah. No more. I, my tears went away already. So, you know, I guess he said he couldn't handle me no more. I guess it was more for her because he'd rather stay with the woman than send, send me back. Yeah. But I remember when he sent me to back. I looked back and he was crying. Oh, really? Okay. He was yeah. crying. You know, 
But I, I, was, I, I was dying to get back. And the shit is, I came back at 15. Right? In the, yeah. middle, after, in the middle of 15 or so. And then I go right back to my neighborhood, and the first thing I ran into Oscar, he was on the sixth floor with Gina. Hey, come down with my friends. Oh, and guess what? Getting high all over again. Oh, wow. You know? But I had met Nana there, you know? Yeah. And it was like a movie because when I told her, she was very hard to get, but um, uh, her sister would play. They had a, a Beatle, a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And she would tell me, look, be at the corner and, and we'll take you. Yeah. And that's the way we started hanging out. And then they met somebody, this, her sister met this guy. And so he spoke English, so we got along in the flat. Yeah. So now we're going together to all the dancing. So I'm, I'm wondering when she's going to let allow me to be her boyfriend. So what happened was, we went to a dance in Rio Piedra, and then I had to tell her that I'm going to Puerto Rico. Yeah. I'm, I'm going back yeah. to New York. Yeah. And we went for a walk under the moonlight, and we started kissing and everything. When I told her, look, I'm going, she started crying. Oh, no, no, no. And you could I feel the hot tears. Yeah, yeah. Hot tears all around me, you know. And she said, I'll find you, I'll find you. So we rode for a couple, you know, for a little while. So they still had the train on 3rd Avenue. At that sure, time. sure. And I had changed the train, and I was walking to buy some clothes on 3rd Avenue. She was walking this way. She was walking this way, and I'm walking this way. And I look at her, this girl looks like Nana. Yeah. And as we pass, I whisper, Nana. And we walk, and we like turn around at the same time. <laughs> and she said, That's Barin. That's crazy, yeah. She said, yeah. Barin. I said, yeah. She ran towards me, man. Wow. And then she said, I gotta go. Listen, this is my address. Come see me after work. And I went and we kept on. But I already had a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was the part that, that, that didn't allow me to stay with her. And then she became, she was still a virgin at 22. Sure. And she saved, and, I, and she allowed me to be the first man in her life. Yeah, yeah. Which that was meant to be anyway in Puerto Rico. Yeah. You know, and the thing is that I couldn't handle it. So I started using again. And... Because I was locked up already. Oh, okay, okay. I, I see. See, I and 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 uh, by that time, I, and I was in the in the old YMCA on West Sixty First Street, and I had I was reporting then. I had the kid, and um, I had come out of parole because they sent me to Woodburn after they caught me because the first time they I was a civil commitment. For the Rockefeller program. Mm -hmm. That means I asked for help. But then yeah. they locked you up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that. So they sent me to Manhattan State. Okay. That's when they yeah. were doing the French Connection. Yeah. At that time. And um, I met my boy Happy there because um, I was in the main bomb building, the main building. And I was like, they called me Earl Flint this guy because I used to have a bandana and I was always running and doing all kinds. I had so much energy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm getting a visit. Uh the, the my mother went with her friend and her friend and the and the and the and the and the captain of the guards got along. Ah uh, so all of a sudden okay. I got a carton of cigarettes without a visit. Yeah. Wow. And some stuff. And I said she I won't come visit you at this time. Yeah. So it so happened at that time I was going out with Dorothy. Okay, yeah. And she would go see me, and she they would say it was for the last visit. Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't just get my groove on. Yeah, So yeah, then yeah. I ran into Happy, and he was in the Maybomb building. That's where they press clothes and everything. Ah. Uh, okay? Sure. And he says, come over here. I already had knew that because my sister worked in the cleaning. Yeah. And they used to call me Romeo there because I always <laughs> wanted my jeans real cut, real yeah. everything. So anyway, so um, I went there and we had, we had to sneak in wine, yeah. sneak in smoke, because they allow people that already go home to go to work. Yeah. So we will get the money from the visits and tell them to buy shit and put it in the garbage can. And we only had a few seconds to get it. Yeah, yeah. Right? 
because we will wash the dishes and it's okay, empty the garbage, and then we will go and stash it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then take it upstairs. We even snuck a TV in there. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you, we're crazy. But what happened with Dorothy now, she would meet me halfway when they say, oh, go to, you gotta visit the main mom building. I was able to walk by myself. Yeah. I would meet her halfway. We just enjoy each other. And this was uh, this was after the Ghetto Brothers. That was uh, I think before the, the Ghetto Brothers, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think no, I think it was after. I think it was after. Yeah, because I have I was in the program set out already. Okay. Yeah. After that, you know, um, I'll get my timeline together as I continue to talk. Sure. You know, uh, because there's so many things in my life, you know, um, that I went through. You know, uh, somebody ratted me out, and I was selling um, hash. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then and, and playing paddleball at the same time. They told me, empty your bag. One time mm -hmm. you close the door, you empty your bag. But I mind you, I was in in a printing class, yeah. I, I became a lifeguard there, yeah. everything, but oh, I guess he would have let me go if I would have came back uh, when my son was about to be born, and he knew it. He said, look, I'm not going to lock you up because your son's going to be born. Yeah. I think if I would have came back, he would have done that to me, yeah. but I didn't. And it was funny because my boy, there were some cars, cop cars going slowly like that. And another one, slowly, and another. So this guy, Winston, came, and I was with Joe Asset. We were drinking in the parking lot while they were playing basketball on the projects. Yeah. Right, McKinley projects. And he went and said, look, there's two white guys in a car behind that bush. You can't see them, but they can see you. Okay. Wow. I think, I said, oh, shit, at the end, I see one came. I said, Joe, that's for me. And there was a hole in the fence, and when I walked through it, yeah. and I had a 45, in my hand, and they came out of the project out of nowhere. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I said, Wow, well, I'm on my way to Woodburn. Yeah, yeah. And I started reading my astrology sign, and they said I was going to take a short trip that day. Yeah. And I was on my way upstate. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. I had, you know, I used to dress because I'm dance. So the first thing I did was got rid of my underwear because I always had briefs. Yeah. And I didn't want that shit. Yeah. You know, and instead of getting my uniform, I went to get a haircut because I had an Afro shag. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, and, oh, hell no, I became institutionalized. So, so what I did was I said, nobody write to me but Sonia. Yeah. That was the mother of my kids. Then Jay, my mother, Jason. And I said, Sonia, if you want, see somebody fine. Because I thought I was going to do time because I had escaped from Manhattan State. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and that was stupid of me because I, I had short time to go. Um, so I became, I became an altar boy quick. Right? Sure, yeah. Um, they, uh, I became a, um, the, I hear me, what's the word, um, you know, I had to clean, uh, there's a name for that, Jesus Christ, I just forgot, you know, because I was, I used to want to open my door, because we used to have wooden doors, yeah. right, with the little hole, and the guy that I used to take care of, she, like you, she likes to hear my story, uh, was at Woodburn, okay. So you, you were an altar boy, and then you were... A no, for a tear man. That's what I was, a oh, tear man. Oh, okay, okay. So the guy that was going to go, he was going to go home, but I used to come out, and I used to say, let me let me clean, let me do yeah. something. I don't want to be in the cell. I was young, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the guy, he used to throw a renaissance. That was his name. He was in the, in the railway uh, prison riots. Oh, okay, he was a okay. security there and he was cracking hands there, I heard. Yeah. So he would just try to hit me with the stick. Oh, wow. And then go. But I would go sideways, sideways. <laughs> so I would see where it would go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he didn't get to hit me. Oh, that's good. So guess what? 
when the guy left, they gave me the job. <laughs> so now my cell's open. Now I can take a shower for as long as I want. Yeah. Right? And I, I go take the cigarettes they gave you with Chesterfields. And I would have my cools in that because they also knew I, I, I printed and I pressed clothes and I... I, I sold and I did things because I learned it in, in my state. Yeah. But I knew it from before, from, my, from the cleaners from my before. And and and, and they, 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 on a Saturday, they told me, open my son, and they said, come on, come with us. And they told me, you want to press clothes. Okay, and yeah. there, I started to crank on, and there they started, they, they started juggling, you know. So they said I had my uniform real nice, yeah, with flaps and yeah, flaps yeah. there and everything. So I said, okay, hook me up like that, boom, and I hook you up. And then I had to press the clothes for the guys that were going home. Now they were coming in from the streets, and, you know, because they worked, they went to college in Sullivan County. Oh, okay. Up there. So what happened was, I said, look, you hook me up, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of your clothes real nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. And then and then uh, Abbott, that was another. Uh, uh, he was in charge of the state shop, and he used, he used a lot of people to swag. He said, "Stop swagging." You know, that's when we would be juggling, because the people that worked in the farm were bringing fresh foods and fresh things. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, you because know, they had bread that thick, man. Oh. And I remember I used to make sandwiches with uh, tuna fish with Vienna in them. After I ate, I became big. <laughs> I, I, I lived weights and everything. But the first time I had an afro was in my state because he said the white guys that used to. Um, um, me and the uh, uh, cutting and shit like that, they put an afro on me. Okay. Like natural. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it looked nice, I guess, but then the, those afros started coming around. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and I, I shaved, I took it off anyway. I'm just too too much from the block, I guess. I yeah. don't want to be seen like that. But then that, that happened, that style came out, you know? Yeah. But anyway, um, before before that, when I got there, I was still kicking. I couldn't sleep much, and a guy escaped. Wow. This guy asked us for sheep. He was giving him the sheep, and he said he was gonna escape, and he did. Wow. I remember the guard walking around around. I think it was four in the morning or five in the morning. He's doing the rounds, and he said, "Oh shit." I hear him say, oh, shit. And then he ran and he locked all, you heard all the gates go, clack, all locked down, yeah. And then, and I remember the sun coming through. I remember everything clearly. And then they ran and opened only his cell. <laughs> and he left the things on the wall. It's a nice place to visit, but I don't want to stay here <laughs> every he day. He left a lot of shit on the wall. Wow. But I'm sure they caught him because that's farmers. Yeah. And those farmers, uh, they'll catch you. They will get paid for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but then there, right? I also sent the printing. Remember, the yeah. Public. I was an auto boy in in, in, in PR, PR. Yeah, in PR. Even and... though I didn't like it, <laughs> but you had to be because I was a capstone, right? So the guy, one of the auto boys, left also. So I began. I went for that job just so I could be a walk around to oh, give absolutely. a give out those little. Uh, uh, um, little um, saints oh, with the numbers, yeah, yeah, with numbers to inmates. Yeah. So I'll be walking around. I just want the freedom, you Absolutely. know. So I got it anyway. I do. So I, I, that's one job, right? The altar boy. I began working on the on the weekends on the state show, just yeah. doing the clothes. That's when I was juggling. I became tear man, so I was able to watch TV when I wanted. Oh wow! On Saturdays, I would pick up, take out six guys. Yeah. To GI the whole tier, yeah. right? So I make sure I made it equally to whites, to blacks, to Spanish. Sure, you know, I didn't sure. want, you know, not like I just take out all my boys, you know. So um, I said we finish by a certain time we can watch Soul Train. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, they want to watch Soul Train, you know. And and um, then I be, they because the printing they allow me to work in their uh, confidential room oh, wow. to print stuff where all the literature was that is very sensitive. You get in your hand on oh, one of those, you can actually get out. Yeah, sure. You know? But anyway, you have to make the board to find out how much time you got. Yeah. I 
I said, I have an escape. I think I'm going to do a lot of time. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, that's why I used to write to Sonia. And I said, things like that. She's the only one I used to write to, you know. And I had myself hooked up with, with the little ping pong balls coming like that, like it was the the galaxy. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, yeah the yeah, universe. Because yeah. I was into astrology and all that shit. Sure. But really, my cell looked really nice anyway. Um, and since I draw and do all that shit, you know, I was good at it. I did. I hooked it up. Anyway, I went to the board, and they told me. I was there like five minutes, and they were greeting, and they said, okay, go outside. I went outside. About ten minutes, I came back in. They called me back in. and said, how would you like to go home on the 28th? <laughs> and I told him, don't, please don't, don't play with me. Yeah, man. yeah. And he said, no, you're going home next wow. month. Wow. We consider you uninstitutionalized because I was in the highest classes. Yeah. Right. I was an altar boy. Yeah. I was a tear man. I worked in that shop there. Yeah. And I was also printing, you know, pressing the clothes for everybody. So I was. They say you're young. You're an institution. You're an institution. Yeah. You can make a life for yourself. And they allow me. Allow me to go home, man. And tell nobody. I just when I got off on the 161st Street that they dropped you. Yeah. We got high. We we oh, drank. Yeah. Then yeah, I yeah. made it home to my woman, and uh, she was there in front of the TV with my son. Wow. Wow. Waiting for. You know, um, that was that was basically it, man, for this part. You know. How old was your son at the time? Ah, uh, he was just oh, wow. not even a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Months, you know, maybe five months. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was it. But because of that, I didn't. I I really couldn't. Even though Nana used to tell me she wanted to be be a physical ed teacher, yeah, you know, uh, because she knows I'm my sports. She followed in Puerto Rico. Yeah, she knows how good I am because I played when they played volleyball against another 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 Casario, another you know town. Sure. And everybody was out there and they picked me. Yeah. Basketball against another, they picked me. And I was in the Sports pick me. That's why I learned how to dive off the boat to PR. Oh yeah. We used to go into sneak into the navy yard and jump off the PT roofs and all that shit. Uh. After I loved it, you know. And um, that was that part. But that I, I didn't understand. Females are more mature than men. Oh, for sure. You know, and they know what they want more than men. I had too many issues, you know. Uh, Cause Nana was good for me. Yeah. You know, and, but I had Sonia and I had abandonment issues. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that happened when the mother of my Naomi, my youngest kid, she wanted to go to Florida, and um, I couldn't do it because my I have, now I had a boy and a girl. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. You want? We can stop here. It's gonna be five o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead and stop. Right? Because she's supposed to go home at 